you have come to the place where you can learn to harness the power of intention, to create subconscious beliefs that serve you, and to gain insights that allow you to create a life personally and professionally that you desire. This is the place where you leverage your subconscious mind and design your destiny. Join me now, your host, Penny Chason. Dr. Adrian Massey is my special guest today. Adrian is basically an innovator in the food industry in terms of quality and delivery. He's worked for several big names that you would recognize, but more recently, he made a shift in his life and became an entrepreneur so that he could spend time with his son when he was born prematurely. Adrian, just like any entrepreneur, has experienced the ups and downs, and today he's going to share with you his journey of having been at a place where his company's valuation was at zero and how in nine months he's increased that valuation to one million pounds. You're not going to want to miss this. You're going to want to hear how he did it. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. And hi, Adrian. Thank you for coming on to chat with me today. In the intro, I highlighted a little bit about you. But I think that with something like this, it's best coming from you because what you do is one of those things that I never would have even considered was a potential career until like after I had gone to college and gotten out of college myself. This is just not one of these things that you hear about when you're in high school. So how did you get into food science? Yes, I hope it was my my journey to food science actually really started when I was in in uh, in high school, and at that time I was studying home economics, and you know you do certain subjects that click for, for certain people, and for me it was science, and it was the and the home economics. So when I did that um to what we have in the UK is called A levels, which is just before you go to university, I did a an A level on food science and nutrition, and I scored. A straight A with it, and I thought this is interesting. And the teacher always believed in me, as she believed in me more than I believed in myself. So that was that was my past. I was thinking, okay, this is this is what I got to do. So that's why I went to university, did a, a first class honours, got a first class honours degree in food science and nutrition, and then went on to study that at a PhD level as well at a different university. So to me, at least to me on the outside, it sounds like you've had quite an exciting career, even in corporate. I mean, you got to work with some really big name brands that that people would recognize. And, you know, what was that like to work in corporate for those brands? I mean, how how did that help you get to where you are now? Yeah, it was um it was an amazing experience and you know I feel very privileged to to have worked for um well certainly for some of the biggest companies and brands in the world. Um you know, people have probably heard of Kraft Foods. So I worked on, I know you guys have Maxwell House Coffee over in the States um, and Tassano, I think you've probably got that, you almost certainly have that over there as well. Mm-hmm. So I've developed um, some products for for those guys. I've worked for, for McDonald's launching um, bakery products for them. And what it does, is it gives you a you know, because a lot of people just see products on the shelf, oh, this is interesting, but don't see all the, you know, the sort of, the, you know, the me, the little people walking around in little white coats, developing the products and making sure that they're safe to consume and they're really high quality to get through the manufacturing process to get into store and everything's going to be okay for the shelf life that they're, you know, that um, they're still on the shelf with. So it gave me a real great background in applying these scientific principles to product development and also from a financial point of view to be able to look at the costing of all the ingredients to make sure there's enough margin for the actual company that's making the product and then obviously for the for the retailer so and also a great value for the um for the end consumer as well so it's it can be a great grounding to, to get to the point that i am now right and one of the things i didn't highlight in the intro is that you have created a product that you've actually brought to market. And we're going to be talking about how 
the work that you've done over the last year has impacted that process because it's something that is always, I don't want to say in flux, it's something that you're always navigating with these things. It's not something that you just set it and forget about it, right? And I think this product is really interesting and amazing. It's called the Seago Breakfast Drink. And tell people a little bit about like, how did that come about? Like, what gave you the idea to create that? Sure. So, so what happened is about approximately eight years ago, my son was born very prematurely. So he was born at 28 weeks, weighing basically one, one kilo or just over a, a smidgen over, over two pounds in weight. And in all fairness, it was very touch and go whether he's going to make it. They thought we had to meningitis as well. And it was a, it was a, in the morning as always, because obviously like, we, we weren't sure what, how it's going to work out for him. So we wanted to make sure that I saw him as much as I could. Um, obviously they go to work and then we had life. So it was, it was pretty, it was a very stressful and anxious and busy time. And I love breakfast cereal as in fact do most of the UK population. I know it's very big in the, in the States as well. And um, I think certainly within the UK, we can see more breakfast cereal than every country um, in the world. And I think it's, it's present in, in over 90% of UK households. So it's a massive staple. It's like, I think it's a two billion pound market over here. It's just absolutely massive. And I know that UK and Canada are not, are not far behind. So what it was, I was thinking, well, there's all these other products out there that are just packed full of sugar, packed full of fat. And from my background, I recognize those products. They're just not as good as they're, as they're really made out to be. So I kind of took that challenge that I have when my son was born and using my expertise in food science and nutrition to create Seago and basically to, you know, to introduce your listeners to what the product is. Effectively, what we're doing is I've put an entire bowl of multi whole grain cereal and milk plus seven vitamins into a bottle. So you've got, um, got fiber, you've got protein and the vitamins itself actually will actually reduce tiredness and increase metabolism as well. So it's a very functional product on top of the fact that it's a really effortless breakfast. You know, you don't need the, the spoon, the bowl. It's just, a, you just grab it and go. And it's just a, a, basically the, the holy grail of breakfast as, as, as quite a few buyers have told me. So, Yeah. And we're not here to really talk about breakfast cereal, but I know exactly what you're saying and I understand your inspiration because I go to buy cereal and even to buy a whole wheat cereal, the first or second ingredient is sugar. Correct. And it makes it very challenging to be healthy. So this is something that came about and you created it and you actually had this product on British Airways, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. So the, the first customer I got that year was the, the largest airline in the world. It was down to British Airways and they absolutely loved the product and it was going really well until we had some issues with the manufacturer. Um, so then I had no choice but to, to close the joint venture that I had with that company and then, yeah, then move on to, and so on to another manufacturer. Yeah, sometimes we have to reset, right? During all of this time, when you transition from corporate to being your own boss, what were some of the challenges that you faced as you made that move from one world into the other? Because they're certainly not the same. And it's something that I've talked about on the podcast before. Yeah, it's, I think there's a, a couple of a big things that stand out for me. One is the fact that you go from having huge resources, you know, multi-million pounds, budgets, loads and loads of people, big teams to just me, myself and I, just one person having to balance so many hats. And uh, that was a big challenge that there's nobody else to bounce ideas off um, and talk to and and kind of get that feedback from. It was all the decisions and, and conversations had to go on pretty much at, at the start in, in my own mind. And that brought uh, certainly anxiety and uncertainty stress pressure and uh, it was not a, an easy transition to make I think it's it's easy to think oh well, I'm going to be my own boss this is going to be great fun and then after a, a week or so it's kind of uh, this is going to be not quite as easy as I thought it was going to be <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. We, and one of the things that can happen is that when we have the weight of all of those decisions put on us, that we can realize where we previously found safety and security with having that team around us. And now we have to make those decisions. Now, when you and I connected, you had already started to do some of the internal work around all of the, you know, the judgment, the fear, the anxiety. Why would you be willing to share some of the strategies that you were using before we connected? Yeah, a lot of it, I think probably the best way to describe it was using a very logical approach you know, literally going through and going through what they call Socratic thinking, you know, really going using critical thinking skills to try and understand, okay, why am I feeling like this? What's going on? And really trying to, to break it down. But what I was doing, and, and of course, the reason why we connected is that I was still getting in my own way, but I couldn't understand for the life of me, what was it that was stopping me from sort of getting over that fear and anxiety? What was it that was stopping me from reaching out to the bars I knew I had a great product so what was that internal resistance that I was that I was facing to go out and make that impact and, and really put myself out there it was a I guess it was quite a strong vulnerability I think probably coming from a one of these you know the big corporate environments to being on my own and, and doing everything myself I felt very vulnerable and you know when I was, I was reaching out and got myself a, a coach and that, you know, then again, that helped and was pushing me along the right direction. But there was still some big blocks, which I kind of knew were there, but I didn't know what they were. And that was, yeah, that was, the I think, the start of the journey then that we that went on together. Yeah. And, you know, so many times we, I mean, and it, it's completely reasonable to start out with like mindset. Like we have to change the way we think about things. We change the way we look at things. And we learn to manage our thoughts. And that's something that, you and I both learned on a massive scale with this coach is like how important it is to manage your attention and pay attention to where your thoughts are because it will dictate your day. Your subconscious mind will run your world if you don't run it. Would you be willing to share a little bit about, you know, you you were having this resistance to getting on the phone. It was just I don't want to call it dread, but like you, you just didn't look forward to getting on the phone to reach out to people. How would you describe that issue and what was it like to overcome it? What kind of a, a shift did you see in how you were showing up in your business? Yeah, so really, I would hate, absolutely hate getting on the phone and I wanted to approach buyers or potential people that could help and support me so my default was just to hide behind email that was my way of doing it and I realized that that was going to be very debilitating for, for myself and and for the business so yeah, after we did that work together I think what was interesting is that within a relatively short amount of time I found myself spending more and more time on the phone, having those conversations, driving the product forwards. And it was just like a, a sense of, of joy and happiness, like something has been unlocked and I can finally be Adrian, I can finally be myself. And of course, you know, the more real you are, the more authentic you come across. And that then has starts to have a, a big impact on the way that people perceive you and then ultimately the way that the, the business starts to take off. Yeah, and this shift was big for you because something major happened right after we did that work together. And that was that's when you had that manufacturing issue that you mentioned earlier. And so that income stream was off the table. So Correct. now it was more important than ever to reach out to investors and we continued to do work together. And I, I taught you some strategies to continue to be more positive, to reprogram your subconscious on your own. Like I gave you the tools to continue to move forward on your own. And I want to fast forward through all of that and talk about how that along with the other 
coaching strategies that you've worked with with other people because it's important that we work at things from multiple angles, right? Where has that taken your business now? What's changed? Because I don't want to spill the beans for you. Because I don't don't know what um, exactly we are and aren't at liberty to discuss, but you've made some major headway in outreach and connections. And I mean, you, you mentioned that you've got several letters of intent and the value of the brand is growing and you're really excited for potentially what's to come. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's a shift that to be honest, I can't truly, it's, it's almost hard to recognize from, from the position that I was before because, and I, and I don't know where I, where I would have been, without the work that we did. So like you said, well, I had a joint venture with the uh, third largest there in the UK. And in, in theory, it was a, a match made in heaven. But things didn't work out because of some issues within their, within their technical department. And that basically shut the business down. So all of that work I'd done had just literally overnight, their revenue, everything had just stopped. And I then, through the work that we were doing at the time enabled me to pick myself up very quickly so i then got a new manufacturer on board who are you know world class at, at what they do i've opened up a whole world of possibility in how we produce the product and extend the shelf life without adding lots of nasties to it uh, which then you know enables the product now to, to not just be within the uk we can export it worldwide and it also enabled me to, even though at this point, you know, bearing in mind that the product was no longer was no longer selling, still I was able to go out and get letters of intent from British Airways after they said we love your product, we want to take it back on board again. The third largest contact cater in the UK, and also from a large online retailer as well in the UK. So I then received those letters of intent, which are probably worth close to to half a billion pounds. And then on top of that, that's enabled me to to not just push that product out into the market. Um, I've also been obviously using that to, to build an investment case as well. So... Yeah, already the, the the company has been valued at uh, one million pounds. So before it was pretty much next to nothing, and this is you know all within the the case of pretty much uh, probably about nine months from from when that happens to, to the point that we are now. And on top of that, I also have been out developing a a vegan product because obviously that's a huge trend, a huge worldwide tr- trend at the moment. So I've developed uh, an oat milk version with a, a, a similar formulation with a putting the whole bowl of cereal in there and i've been approaching the major supermarkets and within less than a week they're wanting samples they're wanting commercials on it and it's it's just flying off the shelves because I, again i'm pushing myself out there and taking you know the business to just to a different level it's incredible Discover what it feels like to accelerate your success in life. If you are finding yourself exhausted from mindset hacks that fall flat, you might want to consider registering for my Subconscious Breakthrough Power Session. After this two-hour group subconscious reprogramming workshop, experience a new way of thinking that helps you to attract more of what you want from clients to cash. This is a group workshop, but you get to specialize it to your needs. You get exactly what you need, want, and desire out of this workshop. And for a limited time, it is only $147. And you get lifetime access to the replay. Spots are limited, so you want to sign up now to secure your place so that you can have your subconscious breakthrough power session and attract into your life exactly what it is that you desire right now. Last year, before you started shifting the subconscious beliefs that were driving this fear of being judged and the anxiety, if you had imagined where you are right now, would you have believed it was possible? 
No, I would have just said the thing you're joking. <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> you, you can't shift like that in such a short time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just really want to highlight, I mean, you're putting yourself out there in front of some really big names and, and some really major players in the investment world. How does that feel to have these phone conversations or, you know, whether it's online meetings or face to face, however it is that you're doing it? I mean, how does it feel to be in front of them and say, hey, this is what I got. It's great. Yeah, it, it feels, it just feels totally amazing to be honest, Penny, because, you know, just take yesterday, I was pitching to a group of investors from a highly prestigious organization within the UK. So I was pitch, pitching to a board of their angel investors. And after the the pitch, the, the, the organizing committee said to me, you know, the way that you come across was just you know, so confident, so passionate in what you're doing. And there's no way that I could have given that delivery, you know, 12 months ago. It would not not a chance. (laughs) Uh, So it it just feels amazing. Just, it's not just a question of just, you know, of of delivering and doing justice to the product itself. It's just doing justice to me because obviously it's only when you make those internal changes and you make those switches within yourself, then every part of your life starts to improve and starts to expand. And that's what things that that's what makes everything magic, really. Yeah, I think that you and I have pretty well learned from a mentor that we we have in common. And I'm just going to say his name, Jim Fortin, um, because the things that I've learned from him have transformed my life. I know that they've transformed your life. And the one thing that he is so adamant about, and it is so true, is that your business is a reflection of you. Absolutely. Yeah. So all in all, what what are some of the most important strategies that you've brought into your life over the last year to 18 months that help you to maintain this confidence and I'm going to go so far as to say as alignment because when you have passion and confidence for your product you're aligned with what it is that that you're doing when all of it comes together like that and when you talk about the product I see a change (laughs) in your (laughs) face as well for those of you listening we're actually on video so yeah just kind of share like what what are some of the most important things that have impacted you that you have in your life right now that you use every day? Sure. I think for sure the most important thing hands down is self-hypnosis. I will not get out of bed no matter what until I complete the self-hypnosis, which is a combination actually that I use of obviously the, the work that we did together and the introduction that you that you gave me to the seventh part, but also um, from the work that, that we obviously have got from, from Jim. So I, I combine the two to make it extra powerful. And that's repeated three times a day. So what that enables me to do is once, you know, it's, it's a, a continual building process. So once you've established a new way of behavior or a way of, of being the, that you want to be in the world, then you switch to the next one. And that in itself is just so powerful because, you, you know, every pretty much every 90 days you can completely reinvent yourself. So that for me um, has been a huge, a huge one. And I think the other one, which it sounds so simple, but I think to most people until I finally went from understanding it to knowing it was that of choice and choosing, you know, this is where I see myself in five years from now and operating continuously from that place so when something comes up you know you can't ever make those limiting beliefs those thoughts necessarily disappear but what you can do is go actually I'm going to choose not to go down that road of you know well there's doesn't matter I don't get this so much with making phone calls but in other areas of my life there's something that comes up where it's scary it's unknown rather than sort of getting traps and all that fear anxiety and oh my god what's going to what's going to happen is so I'm going to choose to act from that new avatar, as I call it, that that new way of being. And then you make decisions based on how that future Adrian would act. 
rather than the one that would have done 12 months ago. And when you just simply choose how you go to show up in life, it's just amazingly, mainly powerful because then you're sitting within a place of your own power. And when you do that, then, you know, anything is possible for, for anybody. Yeah, I think that that is the most powerful tool that we have is our power of free will and choice. We don't have to be stuck in a negative cycle of thinking. We can choose a new story. And it's just exactly as you said, every 90 days you can recreate yourself. You can choose to up level to the next level and and just continually peel the layers of that onion to let go of the old stories the old way that you were taught. It's like, oh, you know, if you want to be successful, get a job. Well, you can be successful and own your own business. Now, is owning your own business for everyone? I don't think so. Everyone has their own path. But, you know, if you want to change and do something different, if you want to up-level your business, if you want to start a new business, these stories that we tell ourselves in using our conscious and our subconscious to create this new way of thinking, believing, and being in ourselves it is a huge piece of all of it. And it all circles right back around to choice. We get to choose how we show up. We get to choose, are we committed to doing the work to make it happen? And I tell you, I, I think you're one of the most committed people I know because at one point, correct me if I'm wrong. At one point, did you tell me that like you get a, you make sure you wake up like 30 or 45 minutes early so that your morning self hypnosis is absolutely non negotiable? Correct. Yeah. So I wake up at half past five. So I have those first 30 minutes because obviously that's also the time when your mind is most receptive as well, obviously, just before you go to sleep as well. So I will actually set the, up, the alarm half an hour earlier to make sure that I get that done because it's absolutely non-negotiable and I have not missed it in what I think probably easily nine months and I have no wow. habit of, of breaking that now. <laughs> yeah, that's that's commitment. I know we were here to, to showcase and highlight like where your business is. I mean, the, the value of the business has gone from a million pounds to a half a billion pounds. You've got people just pre-ordering they're like ready for these samples these things flying off the shelf but when we change on the inside we're not just changing ourselves our relationships change how has all of this work that you've done impacted you beyond yourself sure it's it's massive <laughs> that's uh you know i think the, the business in itself is a is a it's just in, in itself is a, it was a huge shift but what was interesting is from the point of view of the relationships that I have with my children, with my wife, and with my friends, it's been massive because, you know, as you know, we were, we were doing that work together. I had some friendships in my life that were, were not supportive at all. And I was in a position at the time where I didn't even realize how and I'm going to use the word toxic, how toxic they were. But by truly stepping into my power and believing in myself and what I knew was possible for me, and they me to put those friendships to one side and focus on what's the most important and what's going to make the biggest difference for me and therefore make the biggest impact on my children my wife and the world and you know it really unlocked me and enabled me to show people who I am and be for me you know one of the strongest values I have is being authentic and then that, that enabled me to be authentic and by being authentic naturally people will drift out of your life but also you'll get some great people coming in as well and you know that's why through that, I've got some great people working with me in the business. I have a, a guy that used to work for a very large 
practice steel manufacturer, he used to be the vice president, he's, he's come on board and, and helping me. Some used to work at Monster Energy Drinks um, as the commercial director there. And all, all of these, you know, I'm getting these amazing people, amazing team that are, are coming behind me. And, I, you know, as my vibration is increasing, um, then also, of course, naturally attracting those that are at that vibration. And it's just, yeah, it's just going off the charts. It's just amazing. That's phenomenal. I'm so, so excited for you. And for people who are listening, if they want to connect with you, follow you, find out more about your product, tell people how to do that. Sure. So obviously you can find me on, on LinkedIn, Adrian Massey on, on LinkedIn. Um, for and you'll see obviously the founder of Seagull Drinks. Um, and also you you know feel free to also visit the Seagull Drinks website which is cgodrinks.com and also you can, you can connect connect me through um, from the bottom of that website as well on the contact us part. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. It has been amazing to just see how you have fully come into who you are over the last year. And thanks so much for being on today. Thank you very much, Penny. Thank you for everything you've done for me as well. It's been amazing. Right. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, I will catch you next time. Be sure to go to the show notes. We will have the links to all of Adrian's information. You can find out more about him there. Follow him on LinkedIn because there are going to be big, amazing things coming from this. I can just feel it and sense it. Bye now. Thanks for tuning in today. I would love it if you would head over to iTunes and leave a positive review about how this episode has helped you to improve your life. When you leave a positive review, it helps us to reach even more people, helping them to change their lives. And that positive energy and vibration of sharing comes back to you as we spread the message of how you can use the power of intention, creating stronger subconscious beliefs, and raising our vibration to create the life that we desire the one that we're here to truly live so that we can fulfill our purpose in life. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.